Welcome to beautiful Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. I'm Major Retired Rod Little. I'm the author of the course you're about to undertake, the introduction to United Nations Logistics. We're standing on Citadel Hill, a fort that was established over 200 years ago. And believe it or not, the logistics requirements then really haven't changed from what they are today. The soldiers here had to have food, that clean water, warm clothing, uh, they had to have transportation around the city and around the province. They used the waterways to bring supplies in and out. Thank you for choosing the Peace Operation Training Institute to further your knowledge in this important subject of United Nations logistics. You don't need to be a logistics person to follow the material here. I think it's important for everyone to understand how the mission support concept is, is shaped every mission being different. At the filming of this video, there's 16 missions spread out around the world, employing about 125,000 people, including uh, uniformed military, have police, and civilians. We're gonna start the training, the first lesson, uh, going over the organizations that are responsible to deliver the logistical plan as well as carry out the logistical plan. Starting right at the top with the United Nations headquarters in New York, and then the, the mission support staff in the middle, and then the bottom, which would be the contingents at the, the tactical level doing their own logistic support. The second lesson, you'll have a look at the global field support strategy, uh, ways the UN is increasing the efficiency and the effectiveness of delivering mission support using information technology, leveraging IT to, to make it more efficient through something called Emoja. When a country deploys its personnel and its equipment, there has to be a means to setting a standard as well as a reimbursement process. So lesson three, you look at the contingent owned equipment system, which will cover all of that to ensure that standardization of uh, mission support exists in the field and that uh, countries are, are uh, fairly reimbursed for their personnel, major equipment, and the self sustainment that they're providing to each peacekeeping mission. The health and welfare of UN personnel is extremely important. Therefore, in level four, you look at the medical system and how important the logistics part of the medical system plays out. It goes without saying that without finances, without money, no UN peacekeeping operation can function. So understanding where resources come from and how they're controlled and spent is uh, extremely important. So lesson five, we'll take a look at the resource part, the, how the UN manages its mission financially. Six, seven, and eight, we're gonna break it down into each uh, the general phases of a UN peacekeeping operation. In phase one, it's that initial deployment, often rapid deployment, the, uh, the creation of a temporary infrastructure in order to support the personnel that are going to the mission to carry out that mandate is an incredible task. The, the reception, uh, staging, the onward movement, the integration of the personnel as they move into theater. Second is that mandate implementation phase, the ongoing supplies that are coming in and out of theater, the transportation challenges associated with that. And then the third phase, which is the transition phase. No peacekeeping mission should be there permanently. Uh, so during that transition, all the equipment and the personnel, all that self-sustainment has to be pulled back to uh, another location or even the start state. For example, a contingent deploying from a country will be bringing its personnel and equipment back. Expeditionary operations, they're tough, they're complicated. The operations require that uh, logistical input uh, in order to make it successful. The logistical planners, they have to work alongside the operational planners in order for a mandate for the United Nations to be successful. Uh, so over this course, you'll see how that works. You'll see how important logistics play into uh, making sure that the UN mandate is effective uh, the way we want it to be. So thank you once again for choosing the Peace Operation Training Institute. To further your knowledge, if you have any questions along the way, there are means to ask, please do. Uh, again, I'm Rod Little, uh, Major, retired from the Canadian Forces. Extremely happy to uh, be providing this course uh, for your use.